is uh, A Push Chapter 5, uh, Part 2. Uh, we're going to pick up right where we left off with the imperial reform. We're going to go to the dynamics of rebellion. Um, again, we've had a measure of acts passed that the colonists are unhappy with, and it will be the Virginians that really take the lead in resistance, at least in the beginning. Um, they protest, especially the Stamp Act, which is kind of the big one here. Um, and they actually meet in something called the Stamp Act Congress to actually protest the loss of American rights. Um, but at this Congress, the majority of the representatives there um, still seeking compromise. We're still uh, a long ways away from uh, someone saying, hey, you know what, maybe we should actually just fight the British and become something new and independent. They just want change. The colonists want change. They don't want to necessarily not be a part of the British Empire. See the British Empire as being the greatest empire on earth, and they want to be subjects in that empire. Uh, but as time passes on, increasingly they're going to see that that's not going to be a, re a reality that they can accomplish. Uh, so meanwhile, while the Virginians are protesting, we're having the Stamp Act Congress, um, there's massive resistance in Boston as well. There's a reason why the New England Patriots are located in Boston. Uh, it's a hotbed of resistance. Uh, one of the main groups there was, of course, the Sons of Liberty, which is no bones about it, it is a terrorist group as far as if you're viewing it from the eyes of the British. Um, you know, they semi-secret, uh, they use fear and, and intimidation and bullying to try to um, forward the colonial uh, measures, what they want. Uh, there is a massive refusal to follow the Stamp Act. Basically, people are forcing uh, British government people to accept letters and, and legal documents without stamps. Um, uh, you know, what started off as nonviolent protests is increasingly becoming more and more violent. The people are upset, um, and they are now beginning to be more and more willing to fight for what they see as their rights. Um, now, the resistance drew on three primary sources. Uh, the first was English common law. Um, there was these precedents set, writs of assistance, you know, not going into someone's house without a warrant, things like that. That had been in English common law for several centuries, and the colonials feel like some of these acts are uh, taking away that right. Uh, another one was the Magna Carta signed in 1215 by uh, King John. Uh, trial by jury is one of the big ones from the Magna Carta. They feel like that right is being taken away from them. Um, Lastly, the, the thing they drew on and inspired them was the Commonwealth era in English history, and that was when the king was uh, deposed by Oliver Cromwell, and he was actually uh, the first monarch publicly executed, and Oliver Cromwell has this short period of uh, England being a republic, it turned into a, a, a dictatorship really, but uh, they did have republican ideals, and, and so there are people that really kind of said, well, that was, that was kind of cool, maybe we could do something like that. Uh, colonial newspapers only helped spread the arguments. Uh, the colonial people were able to read uh, at a decent rate, and so they knew the arguments that were going forth. You had intellectual men uh, putting their ideas in the newspapers, and these were, were constantly being read. Uh, people like Jefferson and, and Thomas Paine and some of those that come later. All right. So at this time period, uh, Grenville is actually replaced uh, by Charles Townsend, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it may be a new face, but the policy is still the same. It's that imperial reform policy of putting their thumb down on the American colonies. Um, Townsend, he's hated, uh, without a doubt. He, he, he still passes acts and that the colonists can't stand. Um, there becomes an active boycott, uh, a smart idea on the colonists' part. They decide, hey, let's hit them where it hurts, the pocketbooks, stop buying British goods. That means that we have to produce goods here at home, whereas before, all these finished products were really being made in Britain. We, you know, we were being used for raw resources, we ship it to Britain, Britain makes the finished products. Um, so now this really helps women step up in society uh, because women are going to give, they're going to make their own clothes, homespun uh, clothing, they'll make uh, Liberty tea uh, from the bark, and, you know, instead of buying it from the, the uh, British East India Company, tea company there. Uh, so a uh, group called the Daughters of Liberty, you know, thousands of women who are to the cause of liberty for colonials. Um, Towns is in there for a while. He gets replaced too. He gets replaced by another prime minister named uh, Lord North. Lord North is a little more sympathetic towards our cause, but he's still there. It's kind of, we've kind of gone down a road where of no return here. 
what Lord North is going to do is he, he looks to compromise. He actually repeals all of Townsend's acts except for one. He leaves the act on T, uh, the tax on T. Uh, and that's kind of symbolic. That way the colonists don't think any time the uh, British Parliament passes something we don't like, we'll huff and puff and they'll bow down to us. Uh, the British, from their standpoint, can't afford to do that. Um, so he feels like this is a, a compromise, and perhaps it is. Um, but still some bad things going on because uh, you have all these British troops stationed in Boston, and they're, they're paid very bad wages, and so they're trying to get second jobs in the local economy, which means that Bostonians are competing against jobs with British uh, soldiers, and they resent the fact um, and there's a very famous Boston massacre, kind of agitated by Crispus of Tux and some of these other Bostonians who come down there and start picking a fight with uh, British soldiers. Well, the British soldiers uh, fire on them, kill five or six of them. I mean, it was it's bloody, it, it, very unnecessary, uh, but provoked for the most part by the colonials. Uh, but in the newspapers, it's slammed. There's a lot of propaganda there. Boston massacre. Um, and that really ignites the flames of patriotism, especially in the Boston area. Um, okay, let's uh, end here, and then we'll finish in the third part next.